typically a project may have a series of documents from the client defining what information is required and when that information is required. Um, from a Kobe perspective, that's largely the asset information requirements. So that's the detail of the information that's required in order to deliver Kobe. So that document's quite a critical piece in order to uh, ultimately hand over the information the, cl the client requires. And only once you've got that can you then start to put in, plan, put in uh, place your plans to deliver the information, which would be a BIM execution plan, master information delivery plan, and so on. Now, you can, of course, deliver Kobe without that information, but that's ideally how BIM Level 2 uh, is designed to work. So, Kobe itself. For many, Kobe is a spreadsheet. Uh, Kobe in itself is not actually a spreadsheet. It's a standard schema of information, but typically this is how it's displayed uh, to many, and this is how you would uh, generally exchange it. So Excel is the lowest common denominator of Kobe, and in fact, you could fill in a Kobe spreadsheet manually if you wanted to, if you're insane enough to, to fill it in. There are, um, it's very colourful and, it, and it's important to understand the colours and how the colours relate to Kobe. So the, the yellow fields are required and there are a series of tabs you'll notice along, along the bottom of uh, this spreadsheet and we'll go through those in, in a second. But the, the yellow pieces of information are required and you can't, you can't leave those out. If you do, you're not delivering Kobe. The orange ones are related to other information within the file. So really everything to the left hand side on this image is required. The purple stuff is only actually required if you're producing the information in a piece of software. So if you're manually filling this in, you wouldn't need to fill in uh, the purple sections. And then the green parts are optional. So you get many clients saying, "Can I, I want Kobe, and they don't specify exactly what they want. Um, if, in truth, you can deliver Kobe and you could deliver the yellow and the orange pieces, and you would be fully compliant uh, with delivering that information to them. But then there is a question about the optional uh, information and, and really that you get into questions about which parts do they require. So some of the other sort of key parts to um, Kobe are its classification. So Kobe requires classification of uh, the building itself, uh, floors, the spaces that go in your uh, model and the elements that go in the model. Now within Archicad um, we have a whole bunch of um, classification systems that we can select from. There's a couple on here that I've been, I was testing for, for Graphsoft. Um, and really, you're, you're not limited by uh, the classifications. You can always go and get more classifications from Graphsoft if, if so, if they need it. Um, but generally speaking, the main ones are used, uh, that are used in the UK are already included in the UK template. Now, Uniclass, sorry, Kobe was created back in 2012 in the UK and primarily uses Uniclass 1.4, which uh, includes uh, the common arrangement work section. So if you're using uh, MBS, those are the kind of classification systems that we're talking about. More recently, um, 20, Uniclass 2015 has been published, and that information is available on the MBS toolkit, where you can get the latest uh, classification tables. In fact, they were updated uh, only a week ago. So the industry is moving towards a standardized classification system and moving away from uh, what was MBS and, and cores uh, and those kind of tables, partly to make it machine friendly and, and computer readable. Um, I won't go into my thoughts on these, but uh, classification is a very important part of Kobe. Equally, when we get into Kobe, we have to realize that Kobe, as I, as I said earlier, is only dealing with preventative maintenance. So there are many items that you would think would be included, but actually excluded. Now, Kobe's primary primary goal is to collect information that already exists in your in your production information. So, your door schedules and your window schedules and your furniture schedules, for example, and even your sanitary schedules are the pieces of information that Kobe architecturally is primarily trying to collect. MEP-wise, it's pretty much collecting everything other than um, cable trays, pipes, and ductwork. It's not interested in uh, the bits in between. It's interested in the components at the end of those systems. And you'll notice in this list, large amounts of the structural information, beams, columns, and slabs, and so on, and walls, are excluded from Kobe. So it's really important to understand that it's not trying to collect absolutely everything. And you see many Kobe files that are really struggling because they've absolutely tried to get everything from the model uh, into, into a Kobe export. And the information um, in terms of where this information is placed is, about, again, available on the um, 
BIM task group website with this quite detailed uh, responsibility matrix. Again, uh, not for the faint-hearted, but an important document. But I'll explain how you can skip this kind of step uh, slightly with, uh, with Archicad um, as we go forwards. So really important to understand the structure of how Kobe goes together. Kobe is made up of a whole series of sheets in, in Excel, although, as I said, it's not necessarily Excel, but data that forms the whole of the Kobe structure. And primarily for designers, Archicad users, you're dealing with the information here that's shown in the blue box. So we have a facility, uh, we have floors, spaces, zones, not to be confused with the zone stamp, which I'll explain in a second, components, types, and systems. So that's the information that we're largely dealing with. And there are a few other pieces of information, contact information, coordinates, and attributes that we would also provide. Um, but the build information would not necessarily be provided by the architect. The other thing, um, as I kind of already alluded to, is um, information is exchanged at key points in the process. And this can vary depending on what the client wants to see, but largely, again, aligns with current processes. So at RIBA stage two, for example, you're going to have the spatial information there or thereabouts, um, all the rooms in, the, in your uh, design roughly mapped out in terms of how big they are, uh, how high they are. And it's effectively a schedule of accommodation that you would normally issue at stage two. Well, Kobe can effectively take that information and then export it to a client. Later on, you may be adding windows, doors, uh, and so on into your model and developing the design at stage three. And again, we would export that information to the client. Later on, we would add in more information, fire ratings, acoustic ratings, and that kind of thing to, to our uh, information, particularly for our door schedules and window schedules and those kind of things. And again, we can send that to the client using Kobe. And eventually, that information is added to by others, uh, the product information from product manufacturers, and is handed over to the client uh, for them to use and exchange their information into a facilities management tool. Uh, 